Despite my best efforts to quicken the relentless passage of time, we are still a year at least away from the final season of Game of Thrones. I know, I'm sorry. We still don't know anything about it really other than it's the end game and thus some people are going to die. Loads of people, actually a very lot of people, possibly even f***ing all of them. But in the absence of any cold hard spoilers, we are free to speculate wildly about the fates that will befall Westerosis' most esteemed individuals. My name is Adam Cleary and this is our attempt at predicting the fate of every major character in Game of Thrones Season 8. But before we begin, why not subscribe to stay notified? Ding, ding, done. 37. Hot Pie. Yes, 37. Realistically, what's Hot Pie going to do? Beat the White Walkers with his rolling pin? Win them over with pasties? Your man here is absolutely cooked. Verdict? Dies. 36. Edmure Tully. Poor Edmure Tully has been left in the cells at Riverrun since season 6 and might even die there. Even if he does escape, the man will surely fall foul of the walkers, and that's if we even see him at all. Verdict? Dies. 35. Kyburn. <laughs> Lol, so dead, the mad f***er. Verdict? Dies. 34. Dolores Ed. The Night's Watch is the shield that guards the realm of men, and since they kind of failed at their one job, they need to make up for it by joining the fight. Of course, that obviously means they're completely boned. Verdict? Dies. 33. Harry Strickland. Poor Harry hasn't even entered the show yet and his death is being discussed. But the Golden Company will only be around for a couple of episodes and that time will be spent almost entirely in battle, so it's safe to assume most of them, and certainly their leader, will be goners. Verdict? Dies. 32. Gregor Clegane. What is dead may never die, except in the case of Gregor Clegane, and he is hoping it's his brother who does it. Verdict dies. 31. Mira Reed. Whether she actually appears or not, it's hard to imagine Mira Reed getting out of Westeros alive. The White Walkers are going to blaze a path of destruction and devastation, and Mira presumably will be among the tragic victims of that. Although, hopefully, we do at least get to meet her dad beforehand. Verdict dies. 30. Melisandre. Melisandre's last appearance in Game of Thrones included some key foreshadowing, specifically that she has to return to Westeros and, more importantly, that she's going to die while she's there. Sure, her prophecies haven't always worked out, but it's an odd line to drop in if they're not then going to follow through with it, so yeah, verdict dies. 29. Varys. Two part of this one, as she also told Varys he'll die here as well, so yeah, in for a penny, in for a pound. Verdict dies. 28. Gendry. So that's 9 for 9 on the definitely getting murdered count, but are we making it a perfect 10? Well, we waited 4 years for Gendry's return, and there's not much point in having him come back if all you're just gonna do is kill him off. By the end of the season, the wheel will be broken, and out of the ashes of the Great Houses, Westeros can be reborn. Gendry is the last of the Baratheons, let us not forget, and having him there, ready to rebuild the world, is a nice sign of how history repeats itself and things come full circle. So, verdict? He f***ing lives! Hooray! 27. Lyanna Mormont. God help the poor whites who even so much as think of trying to kill Lyanna Mormont. She will chew each and every one of them up and spit them right back out. Verdict lives, obviously. 26. Beric Dondarrion. With Thoros dead, Beric has now run out of spare lives and also wants to take the fight to the Night King. He's already admitted they cannot defeat death, but he'll go down fighting it, flaming sword in hand, and, well, who am I to argue with him? Verdict dies. 25. Tormund Giants Bane. The first one on this list that's going to be really painful to witness, and my sincere apologies to Simon Gallagher in the process. It'll be sad, yes, but thoroughly fitting for Tormund to die in battle while fighting alongside the man he's come to follow. Fighting is, after all, what he knows best, and there's little for him in whatever's left of the world, so, verdict, he dies. Sorry. 24. Brienne of Tarth. In order to win, some heroes have to make it out alive because, well, otherwise it looks an awful lot like they've lost. Brienne is a great candidate for this and her survival will also make another moment that much more powerful. That moment? Why Jamie Lannister dying in the arms of the woman he loves, of course. Yep, calling it, fight me, Bremund shippers. Verdict lives. 23. Ghost. The showrunners essentially killed off Ghost already by not including him at all in Season 7. It's really not nice to think about, but all the good doggos are probably good gonos anyway, so let's just move on. Verdict dies. 
22, the dragons. The show's three dragons are likely to be more involved than ever in Season 8, with Drogon and Rhaegar likely to be forced to face off against Viserion. Again, looking at the idea of things coming full circle, the first season ended with dragons coming back into the world, so there's something in the idea of the Season 8 finale ending with the dragons going again. Verdict dies. All three of them dies. 21, Grey Worm. No way did they let the big man here get his hole if they're not planning on killing him off. He'll be right back in the thick of the action in Season 8 and is one of those characters whose death would be upsetting to those around him, recognisable to fans, and yet ultimately wouldn't affect the bigger picture. Verdict dies, but doesn't matter, had sex. 20. Missande. Aside from being the loyal companion of Danny, Missande hasn't really done anything important beyond the whole in and out. Wait, no, hang on, how would that? Verdict dies. 19. Yara Greyjoy. Yara will probably have one last emotional farewell scene with Theon, but there's not much else left for her to do after that. Although she's definitely a fun character, she's probably far more interesting to the story if she's simply offed by her uncle Euron. Verdict dies. 18. Euron Greyjoy. It is difficult to see someone who is as irredeemable a villain being left alive by the end of this show. Instead, we should have one final showdown between Theon and his uncle, where the former comes out on top to avenge both his sister and his father. Verdict dies. 17. Theon Greyjoy. Theon has had one of the best arcs over the course of the past seven seasons, which means he is undoubtedly ending in the big seat at House Greyjoy. A noble fighting death would arguably be a sweet release, but he has shit to do after it's all said and done, so verdict lives. 16. Podrick. Pod is just so canny that it's hard to think about him dying because, really, who would want to kill him? Well, the White Walkers would, obviously, and there's a fair chance that'll happen because he's actually quite useless. Verdict dies, and that's a shame. 15. Bronn. There'd be few endings more satisfying to this entire series than the battles being fought and won and Bronn emerging from the rubble and claiming his f***ing castle at last. So, of course, that's not what's going to happen. Dying with a sword in his hand is the only way for him to bow out, so verdict dies. 14. Gilly. We've seen mothers, fathers, daughters, and sons all go, but one family has to endure as an example for the future. Simply put, none are better placed to do that than the sweethearted Gilly, baby Sam, and good-natured Samwell. Verdict lives! 13. Samwell Tarly. Not only is Samwell Tarly the Samwise Gamgee to Jon Snow's Frodo, but he's basically George R.R. R. Martin too. The theory of him being the one chronicling the Song of Ice and Fire is compelling, but more than that, it's the fact that he's the most unlikely and thus perfect survivor. The sort of loyal, intelligent, yet oft overlooked character who comes good in the end. Verdict lives. 12. Sandor Clegane. The Hound is a man with a fire burning inside him, and the only true hope for that to be extinguished, and for thus him to find peace, is with death. He's one of the series' most morally complex and fascinating characters, but one so, so weary of the wars he's had to fight. He's going out, and oh boy, will he welcome it. Verdict dies. 11. Jorah Mormont. Jorah had to be cured of grayscale for one reason, and it wasn't to live happily ever after. It was, obviously, so he could die sacrificing himself for his Khaleesi, the soppy old f***. Verdict dies. 10. Davos Seaworth. Now, Davos admittedly isn't much of a fighter, but he's made it this far and, crucially, survived the deaths of the two men he's chosen to follow. Now, the old, wizened advisor usually dies in fantasy stories, so it would be a nice swerve to have him live and means he can continue as Jon Snow's right-hand man in whatever is left of Westeros. Verdict lives. 9. Bran Stark John, Daenerys, Tyrion, Arya, and Bran were the five characters originally outlined to make it to the end by George R. R. Martin. Now, while the show might not follow the books and plans could have changed, the betting is strong that they'll all at least make it to the finale. Plus, you know, Bran is actually quite good now. Verdict lives. 8. Sansa Stark not including John, three Starks remain in Westeros, which is quite improbable given how many were killed off in the first few seasons. Because the family has been so unlucky and marred by tragedy, it's logical there'll be at least one last devastating blow for them to face. The showrunners have never shown the same love for Sansa that they have for Bran and Arya, as she's been the series' unluckiest character, but just about always survived. That's just what she does, after all, but that would make her eventual death in the finale even more dramatic. 
Verdict dies. 7. Jamie Lannister Jamie Lannister has been on a twisted path to redemption ever since he cried in the bath just like your dad does. With his redemption though surely comes great tragedy mirroring the way he was labelled Kingslayer despite saving the realm from the Mad King. This time though everyone will know he did the right thing which should be killing his sister in order to yet again save Westeros. Verdict dies. No. 6. Cersei Lannister Cersei Lannister might well be Game of Thrones' greatest villain, and Leader Heedy does quite literally have a box in a house that contains my still beating heart, but obviously she still does have to die. The most fitting way to do that is to have Jamie kill her, but the list of possibilities runs deeper than a goddamn Lou Reed song. Verdict dies. 5. Arya Stark Arya's been through a hell of a lot on the show, and it's hard to imagine both her and Sansa dying. Arya though is more of a fan favourite and fits better with the Band of Misfits vibe from the main survivors. Plus her assassin skills could really help them win a major battle. So much of her arc has been driven by vengeance that there is a chance it could lead to her death, but the better odds are on her life being saved by someone like maybe the Hound and being able to find a sense of peace as Arya Stark. So verdict lives. 4. Tyrion Lannister it is possible that Tyrion could die right at the end, and boy would that fit with the finale being bittersweet, but there's definitely a role for him in whatever is left after the battle. Plus, he would be a nightmare for writers to actually kill. As a dwarf, he perfectly fits the way those constantly put down are the ones who'll rise highest. Meanwhile, with Jaime and Cersei set to die, there's little point in having Tyrion go too. Verdict lives. 3. Daenerys Targaryen Daenerys has long believed that it is her birthright, nay, her destiny to rule the Seven Kingdoms, which is precisely why there is no way in hell she'll actually get to do it. The series rewards reluctant leaders over those who seek power, and eventually, Danny will realise she needs to sacrifice herself for the greater good. It means that the series can end without all of the big three surviving, and Danny's death makes the most sense of those. So, yeah, verdict, she dies, and she's the big one. 2. Jon Snow Jon Snow is Game of Thrones' chosen one. The bastard who has risen to be a king, the man who has come back from the dead, and likely the prince that was promised. Jon is the embodiment, you could even say song, of ice and fire. While so much of the show is focused on Daenerys' destiny, it's Jon who is most likely to deliver victory. He's Westeros' greatest warrior, a reluctant leader, a man of true honour. He is this show's Adam Cleary. Also, he's already died once and there's not much point in killing him off again, is there? Verdict lives. Number 1. The Night King This lad, for all his power, simply cannot win. For all the ways this series has subverted genre tropes and blurred lines between good and bad, it's highly unlikely, nay, impossible, that they'd actually end with the White Walkers claiming victory. Because, you know, all life would be wiped out. Sure as shit, he is gonna take a lot of people with him before he goes, but John will complete his hero's journey by killing the first, last, and biggest enemy, thus ending the war. Verdict dies.